search for Timmy Klein, a seven-year-old San Francisco boy who wandered off from his family's McKenzie Park campsite last night. Volunteers are asked to report to the park for deployment by the Marin County Sheriff's deputies. Motorists in the McKenzie Park area are asked to be on the lookout for a small boy wearing a tan nylon windbreaker and blue jeans. Any information concerning... Ali. Thank you. Uh, anything new? The biggest news so far is Tom Banner's up from San Francisco. No kidding. All right. Tom, this is a pleasant surprise. How long has the kid been missing? Well, we wandered off about 7.30 last night. We had a small search party out, but they quit when it got too dark. Uh -huh. Is that the mother? Right, Lois Klein. The father's out looking already. Excuse me. I'm Sheriff Paul Burgess. We have a child missing since last night. Thank you, Senator on people, for coming. Uh, come on, push in close up here, if you will. The lost child's name is Timmy Klein, age seven. It still amazes me how small towns turn out in a crisis. I'd like Senanon to split up and take the northern quadrant and the uh, woods behind the firehouse. Art here will take half of you and sweep in a southerly direction down the coast. I'll head up the canyon with the rest of you. Okay, let's split them up and get started. Okay. Excuse me, Sheriff, can I get the names of the search party leaders? Well, that's myself and uh, Deputy District. Yeah. And the uh, Senanon teams? Well, uh, that's uh, Drew Lewis and Sandy Reynolds. They're reserve deputies. Excuse me a minute. Yeah. Keith? Get it? I'm heading back to the office right now. Don't forget the mother and child reunion shot. You got it, Chief. Don, you're welcome to stop by if you want to wait it out there. No, thanks, Dave, but i got to get back to the city and write up what I got for the afternoon paper. Uh -huh. Listen, we might want to buy one of your, your guys' photographs. Oh, hey, we could use the money. <laughs> Marin County is a quiet coastal area just north of San Francisco, a place where college professors and crab fishermen and cattle ranchers have achieved a common lifestyle, a place where the major concerns usually center on coastal development and the influx of city folk. Dave Mitchell and his wife Kathy had no idea when they moved to Point Reyes and bought the town's weekly newspaper that they would be caught up and swept along by events that would change their lives forever. we haven't published their articles. You remember, eat fish bones? But it's vital information. You see, the enzyme balance of the fish flesh alone is all wrong without the bones. People are doing damage to their bodies and their spirits. I was saying, Dave, that it's probably not in the best interest of public safety for us to publish an article advising people to eat fish bones. But it could be dangerous. I'm sure you see that. <laughs> More dangerous not to. Really? Yes, well, regardless, we have a policy of not printing recipes. Well, I used to publish recipes. It's a new policy. Well, it's not a helpful policy. 
Thank you. You know, uh, you might try uh, the bulletin board. Four rays light. Oh, hi, Keith. What's happening? They did. Oh, that's wonderful. Who? No kidding. Yeah, come right in. We'll get right to work. Dave, they found Timmy Klein and he's all right. Oh, that's great. Which team? Send him on a bet. No, no team. A dirt bike. I found him by accident. Who said they only tear up the beaches? Well, we better get busy if we want to get all this in by tomorrow. Mine's very good. I mean, I fit, but it'll cut. What do you think about mine? Well, just one thing. You mentioned Synanon again and again. Well, they helped him out with a search. Sir Fergus did nothing but praise for them. I know, time. but you quote every last compliment. There were also a lot of average citizens who helped. And you, they're sort of mentioned in passing. You're right. Synanon's presence out there was kind of unique. I guess they were kind of carried away. Sandon's presence in this community is unique. It's maybe something we should look at with a fresh eye. That's a good idea. Next week. having these open house parties here on the ranch. We sort of feel like Marin County is our host, so if we can return the favor once a month or so, the more we know about each other, the better we'll get along. <laughs> when they came to Synanon. Synanon is a society that discourages the dope fiend personality. Are you saying society at large encourages it? Society does foster the dope fiend, yes. At least there aren't any here. In fact, there are very few sick people here. This is our gift business. We ship the client companies all over the country. Things like wallets, pen lights, and other promotional items. This keychain is one of ours. How much business do you do in a year? Oh, about $9 million. But we don't measure value that way. It's just good, productive work for people who've never known that before. The game is one of the main supports a Synanon person has. It's a way to get in touch with your own feelings and the way others see you. You can get it all out in the game and just feel great. Okay, quiet, everybody. Tammy now, Tammy. Love you, Tammy. I wanted to get off and be by myself and see nobody. Because you're not smart. Right. It was stupid. You're a coward, Tammy. You finally found people who love you. You try to run away from them. I just needed some time to think. What do you think is going to happen if you're back on the streets? You're going to fall into a manhole. And you're going to be back on dope. Because you're being stupid. You don't have any character. You don't even think you deserve better. I do think so. You're not making any sense, Tammy. When I was a kid, my father used to tell me he loved me. And then he beat me. And then he tells me he loves me again. And then he beat me again. And he loves me, he beat me. And I was afraid that you guys were going to beat me. OK, everybody, it's the end of our tour. I hope you found it interesting. You can go and get something to eat and have a nice day. Bye-bye. You go ahead. I'm going to talk to the sheriff. Okay. Oh, Dave. Hi. Hi. This is uh, Sandy Reynolds Hello. and Drew Lewis. How you do? Pleasure. I like what you're doing with the newspaper, Dave. Especially cutting out all that awful local poetry. Oh. 
<laughs> well, there was an uproar about that, but we figured the public's right to know was more important than the poet's right to inflict. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about the local primary, uh, or is this a bad time? No, no, walk me down to the kitchen. I'm going to get another one of these. Pleasure. Thank you. It sure looks good. My name's Kathy Mitchell. Jane. Jane Dutton. This is quite a facility you people have here. Mm. How long have you been here? May I join you? Sure. My name is Tony. Kathy Mitchell. Yes, I know. You and your husband bought the Point Reyes Light. Yeah. I think you've done wonders with it. Well, it hasn't been easy. Well, it never is whenever you're trying to change something for the better. A newspaper, a society. Excuse me. Mr. Mason. I hope we can be friends. Soon and on in the light. You know, some of the newspapers in the city haven't been friendly or even fair. And Time Magazine, well, they I read the Time article. A lot of lies told by people who had access to grind. Splittings, quitters. We're suing. We're just a local paper. If we covered Synanon at all, it would be on a local basis. Like today, when we came to take a look at one of your picnics. Great. The more you know us, the more we'll get along. I'm convinced of that. What do you think? Yeah. We could do kind of an overview article. Mm -hmm. Who is Synanon? What are they doing? An asset to the community. I watched you fall. Oh, Dave, we gotta get a house. This live where you work economy measure is getting ridiculous. Mm. One day, I'll run your underwear on page one, and then you'll be sorry. When do we have time to house hunt? Well, I'll have a few weeks soon, between semesters. Okay. Hello? Oh, hi, Keith. What? Keith says turn on KCPY. Quick. Thanks, Keith. As we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, KCPY has learned from official sources that Synanon, the drug rehabilitation organization based in West Marin County, recently purchased over $60,000 worth of pistols, semi-automatic rifles, and ammunition from a San Francisco gun dealer. The Synanon founder, Charles Dieterich, declined to confirm or deny the extent of the purchase has told reporters the purchase of arms was prompted by threats against his life in the wake of recent published articles about Synanon. In Mendocino, officials discussed financing. Yes, sir. I know the place. Hold on. Sure. Everybody decent? Yes, not. Uh huh, no problem. Chief? Yes, sir. I understand. Thank you. I'll be there. Goodbye. Who's your staff? Somebody very important. He wants to talk off the record about those guns Synanon bought. And just who is this Mr. Very Important Somebody? Can't tell you that, Cap. You know, a good reporter doesn't share a privileged source with his editor. The question is, why would he call us? The point raised life. The daily papers are 400 times the circulation we got. Look through those and tell me if you find a story on Synanon and guns. No? No. You gotta understand about Synanon. It's kind of a sacred cow, particularly over the hill in East Marin County. They're very much into alternative lifestyles over there. So I've heard. More Zen Buddhists between here and South Salida than all Japan. Dave, I picked up this book at the library last night. Synanon, Miracle on the Beach. It's a complete love letter. The only working drug program. Happy smiling faces free of drugs at last. It's on the 14th car. I bet everybody in town's read this. Yeah, precisely. 
Printing bad news about synonyms like spitting on the flag. But maybe your important person knows that you and Kathy are new around here. Maybe he trusts you to be more objective. Well, I would sort of like to know why they need $60,000 worth of guns and ammunition. So would I. See you. I can give you information about the guns, leads as to where they were purchased and so on. In fact, it ties in with something else people should be made aware of. What? Do you know Drew Lewis and Sandy Reynolds? Yeah, I met them. They're uh, reserve deputies with full police power when they're in uniform. Both of them are also deeply involved in Sinanon's internal security force. <clears throat> a nice combination. One has to wonder where their first allegiance lies, particularly when one of their names keeps showing up over and over again as the purchaser of those guns. A reserve deputy, a helping arm, a private force. Is this Synanon public information? Yes, Scram. Did he say Scram? The Synanon Committee for Responsible American Media. Oh, well, uh, this is Kathy Mitchell at the Point Reyes Light. We're coming up on deadline, and I would like your reaction. Is it true that Synanon purchased 24 45 caliber pistols, 57 shotguns, 730 06 rifles? You're talking about the lies on TV. That station is one of several powerful media organizations out to get Synanon. Time Life Corporation, the Hearst Corporation. Well, now, hold, hold just a minute now. You're not lumping the point where it's light in with those guys. We have been patient with these persecutions long enough. We're prepared to take whatever action is necessary to ensure truthful reporting. Is that what you need 60,000 worth of guns and ammunition for? You call back when you're ready to listen to us. My name is Richard Offshee. I had known about Synanon for some time, but had begun to notice some disturbing changes in the organization. I wondered how much of this was tip and how much iceberg. I could not have anticipated that the answer to that question would inextricably link me to the Mitchells and the Point Reyes light. Material? Mitchell's purchased local estate. I can't believe it. We actually bought a home. We actually bought a mortgage. Come on, I'll let you carry me across the threshold. Oh. oh, Kathy. Hi, Seth. You giving up the newspapering for drug gardens, huh? <laughs> the joys of home ownership. That's right. Congratulations. Thank you. So, how do you like the new home? I'll let you know after the rots of spring. And that's a grand total of thirty-six eighty. Okay. Seth, would you put these on my bill, please? Certainly. You know Mrs. Mitchell? She and her husband own the light. How do you do? Kathy Mitchell. What's your name? Lindley. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> I think. Did I say something wrong? Not to me. I, I've just been wondering what kind of person it takes to put out a reactionary newspaper. A what? Those articles you've been running about guns at Synanon. As much help as those people are to this community. And then you stabbed them in the back. We didn't know such thing. 
seems to me that a newspaper should be objective, not engage in a smear campaign. If you can't adjust to different beliefs, maybe this just isn't the town for you. I just thought we came here to settle down and be part of a community. Now it seems the people are just turning their backs on us. We're trying to be responsible citizens. Okay, Kat, small town's a clannish. You have to pay your dues before they accept you. I had a professor once who told me that a byline is not a chance for a free ride, it's a chance to take it on the chin. Comes with the territory. So you mean the the white picket fence and the 2.3 kids and the mom and pop newspaper that everybody loves is just a fantasy. Among others. show you where the compound is, but I, I don't know which direction it is. Oh, honey, honey, enough show and tell. Let's just... This is private property. Okay, well, we'll just back up and turn around. Hey, don't I know you? Yeah, you snuck out. This is a split T, man, a lame on the lamb. Maybe he's a spy. Yeah, from Time Magazine, like on the wire. <laughs> Get serious. No! Stop that! What are you doing? Let him go! He's not doing anything! Stop now! Leave him alone! Get away from him! Let him go! Stop it! Leave him alone! Take your hands off of him! Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Business could be better. You want to run the ad for that rototiller again this week? Oh, gee, Dave, I'm sorry. I meant to call. I sold it over the weekend. No problem. Just checking. Uh, don't you uh, usually check the log, you know, for stories? Deadline's not till Wednesday. Uh, why don't you look at it now? Save yourself a trip. Substation, Mr. Hep. Right. Sure. Yeah, I'll send uh, Tom to check that out as soon as it gets back. All right, bye. They dragged him from the car, according to the complaint. Cuffed. They got beaten. Interrogated for hours. My God. Is this true? I have been told not to talk to the press about. I can provide you with an organizational chart of the Sheriff's Department, sir, if you'd care to see who's above me. Mitchell, the Point Ray's life. 
I was wondering if I could ask you a question. You uh, didn't happen to witness anything out here yesterday, like an assault? First, we start try to be good neighbors. We even gave them a heifer. But then the children started coming to us because we're, we're so close, You're right down the road. They came over the hill, down the creek. Sometimes they were wet to the knees. Cinema. Yes, runaways, poor thing. 11 years old, some of them. They were scared to death. We helped them. Told their parents. Got pictures and letters from them. They're kids. They're babies. This is very good. Uh, may I make a list? Oh, oh, no. Oh. They won't, they won't talk to you. Mrs. Gambonini, did they say anything as to why they left Cinema? We're not deprogrammers, Mr. Mitchell. Just people trying to help. Okay. Did you see or hear anything yesterday? Yesterday? No, but, uh... What? Well, these roads aren't the safest place sometimes, you know. There have been people harassed by Sinanon out here. They chased one truck right into town. They want to beat up Alvin. They were out checking one of our houses on the ranch one night, and they came and tried to pull him out of the car. This car right here. They couldn't move him, so they beat him through the window, head and shoulders. Did you report this? To whom? To the sheriff. There's nothing in our back files, I'm sure. Keith? I just can't understand why we haven't heard anything about any of these things. Hi. Hi. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like to extend my subscription. Always glad to help with that. The name is Offshe, O-F-S-H-E, Richard. Subscription still seven dollars? So? Come up to eight. Silly question. Offshe. Dr. Richard Offshe. Yes, I'm a professor at Berkeley, sociology. Oh. I have a little summer place up the bay. Mm-hmm. I uh, found your article about guns at Synanon quite interesting. Rather unique, too. You notice? Oh, yes. Synanon is nothing if not a hot potato for the press. You mean because of the lawsuits against the examiner in Time Life? Yes, but just to call them lawsuits. I mean, $116 million isn't exactly small claims court. Should say not. Oh, uh, honey, this is Dr. Richard Offshee. My name's Dave Mitchell. This is my wife, Kathy. Pleasure. Hi. Do you know they have something called SCRAM? The Committee for Responsible Media? And a legal department of 48 people to back it up. I have friends on the examiner. Synanon lawyers made life hell for them. They couldn't do their jobs. Endless depositions. Somebody made a comment on record that she heard Charles Diederich pass wind. And she was made to answer question after question about whether she heard it or she smelled it, and how obvious was it, and how many times she remembered him doing it. You sound pretty well informed on this. Well, my main concern is uh, social control in societies like cinema. I'd like to sit down and talk with you about this sometime. Anytime. I hope you stick with this story. I admire your courage. Thank you. One thing. Unless I'm mistaken, and this paper does not run on the shoestring, be sure you dot every I and cross every damn T. Deputy, just to have risked his job to tip us to this, you know. But we wouldn't stand a chance against a legal machine like that. We nearly missed an issue last month because you had the flu. What if we had to do hours of legal stuff on top of putting out the newspaper? With me starting classes tomorrow. 
On the other hand, if we don't tell this story, we might as well bring back the recipes. Because we sure won't be a newspaper. We should have plenty of room to print the recipes. We could go belly up on this one. Well, let's not go nuts. Three days to deadline. Somebody's bound to scoop us on this one. Dave, how's it going? Can't complain. Deadline's tomorrow, am I right? You are indeed. Any uh, big stories this week? Just have to buy the paper to find out. Samuel Bell News. Oh, yeah. An article in the history of Cinnamon's ambulance service. I warned you about the papers in East Marin. Is it possible they know something we don't know? Hmm. Which is it, the county budget? Or the Cinnamon beating? all those lawyers.
Okay. Honey, be careful. At least we have one friend. I was only 13. Me and my brother left Wichita when I was 11. I was living in a room off the strip with three other girls. We were sick all the time. When well, we weren't busy getting busted. I turned 10, maybe 15 tricks a day just to support my kids. On top of that, there was my habit. Then one day I went to the beach and I found some people there. They were called Synanons. They took me in, they kept me safe when my pimp came looking for me. Excuse me, miss. May we please have your question? <laughs> All right, here's a question. What's wrong with a sheriff and Synanon having friendly relations? You heard this girl. Sheriff Burgess is probably the first law officer she's ever really trusted. So what's wrong with that, Mr. Peters? There's nothing wrong with a sheriff and Synanon having friendly relations. I hope to have friendly relations with Synanon myself after I'm elected. But I don't think it's right to extend special treatment to one group. I'd like to hear you back that up, Peters. All right, what about the gun purchases, huh? Yeah. Am I supposed to say those weapons are in this county at this moment? They're not in this county. Oh. And if you have information that they are, you should turn it over to me so I can do my job. So Sheriff Fergus to answer this. If Synanon is so law-abiding, why am I afraid to go into my field? Right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Why do young people run away and that's just to hide them? Yeah, right. Come on. Well, that's two questions. And I'll answer both of them. No one in this county should be afraid to walk on his own property. That's right. Right. And any group, any group, with a history of violence or runaway children will be investigated by me. You have my word on that. Every runaway, every group, does that include domestic squabbles oh, as well? Yeah. Are you going to put a squad car in every living room? Come on, come on, Burgess, don't equate that with Sinanana. So it's only unusual groups, like Synanon, that are going to be investigated. Right. Well, who's engaging in special treatment now, Peter? Got an into it. Don't you see how that looks? Oh, how it looks. Who cares how it looks? Look, all I can do is say it for the 20th time. We cannot be for or against anything. We just report what happens. That's the service a newspaper provides. That's the service the Washington Post provides. They don't know the victims. We do. That's got to make a difference. No difference. Then why did we move up here? Why did we buy this damn paper? 
I thought we wanted something personal, not a big anonymous daily. Someplace where we could work at close range and get involved. Oh, I was always taught that a reporter was supposed to stay uninvolved. Oh, come on, Well, maybe I should take your course on journalism as a refresher. Maybe you ought to take a long walk as a refresher. Well, hell, Cass, I'll do better than that. Good night. I don't want the sheriff's scout. He did suspend the Sinon Reserve deputy. I just want him to enforce the law. Law enforcement could use a little help in this town. Why hasn't the paper endorsed the sheriff's candidate in this primary? We don't endorse county candidates. That's rather an ostrich's perspective, isn't it? I'm sorry, Kath. I know you got classes. I wouldn't have called except I wanted you to proof this it's for me before okay. you left. a drug rehab program to act like this. Well, Synanon has been more than a drug rehabilitation center for years. What else is it? Well, Synanon is also a cult. of the kids chasing the van. Great. Okay, I'll see you in an hour. Bye-bye. He's going to run the tape on the 6 o'clock news. I wonder how Sinanon will like seeing that on TV. They'll love it. It's just that I've seen it all before. Even the ape suit. It's textbook Sinanon. Offer to cooperate, and then cry persecution. Stroke the sympathetic press, sue the hostile, mock the rest. Up until Larry County, it was the same thing. Why haven't they sued us? Small fry. Don't get me wrong, Dave. That may be your greatest strength. 
The time may come when only the little voices will be left. Nope. KCPY will cover this story, and we are not small fry. I'll see you guys later. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Yeah. Take care now. Thank you. It's the violence that bothers me. That's the new wrinkle. East Marin, too? Oh, that's great. Yeah, thanks, Keith. You sure? Absolutely. <laughs> Where are this lost? Most precincts. Paul <laughs> raise light. Yes, he is, Mantel. Who's calling? Sure. That was very interesting. Yeah. A gentleman just called to tell you his battery is dead. Thanks, Captain. Like a new sheriff. I must say I'm surprised. Quite an upset. Cherish the good news, Dave. There's not much of it. Health Department sent five state inspectors out to Sinanon with a warrant to check out the facilities. Mm -hmm. They finally left in frustration. Sinanon made it so difficult for them to conduct the investigation. How could Sinanon ignore a warrant? It's the state of California. The state ain't nothing but a big county, Dave. Meaning what? Those four guys who beat up that Harper fellow, the one you wrote about? Yeah. One of our county judges just uh, reduced the charges this morning from a felony to a misdemeanor. They'll never serve a day. What's new? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Well, try me. You wonder why you have to try so hard, doesn't it? You got time for coffee at Bledsoe's? We gotta finish. See you later. Yeah. Even the grand jury complaints against Sunanon came to nothing. The state just doesn't know how to deal with organizations like these when they begin to go out of control. We could show them. Maybe. Let me ask you something. We have no axe to grind with Synanon. Do you? No. Nothing personal. But I do nurture a dislike for totalitarianism the control of other people's lives, the cult of us versus them. You said that before. Why is Sinanon a cult? Why? Strict internal structure, a single unquestioned leader, behavior control, extreme dedication, a textbook definition of which Sinanon is a textbook example. Unstoppable. And therein lies the potential for a truly dangerous situation. Why dangerous? Cults can mobilize people and have effects far beyond what their size would generally indicate. If that energy should ever turn hostile, it could be very, very destructive. Dave, it's getting late. I have a lot of preparation for my class. Okay. Tell me, Doctor, do you think we could get those files from Berkeley one of these days? Sure. Be glad to. Thanks. That would be a great help. How did Dieterich get started in all this? Well, he was a confirmed alcoholic, but he was a very effective speaker. 
and had somewhat of a following within Alcoholics Anonymous. by the late 60s, Sinanon was taking in large numbers and being criticized for not returning many back into society. So Dieter came up with the first of what I call his perfectly simple solutions. The people that come into Sinanon are suffering from a fatal disease. If they go out of Sinanon, they're dead. In other words, they keep all the fish they catch. Precisely. And put them to work. Neat. Mm. But not neat enough. By 1977, they had assets of about $20 million. They needed professionals, non-addicts, to help run the thing. And they got them, too. Doctors, ad men, accountants, lawyers. It was the human potential movement, the me decade. A chance to get in on the ground floor of utopia. But they had a big turnover problem. And some minor probes into their tax-exempt status. And still the nagging rehabilitation question. Sounds like another perfectly simple solution become a religion. Guaranteed tax status. And nobody graduates from a church. Bingo. OK. We're going to meet three times a week and discuss various problems in modern journalism. Uh, like First Amendment stuff. We'll discuss the First Amendment, of course, but we'll also deal with more practical day-to-day -day issues. Mm, such as? Letting advertisers dictate editorial policy. That's a good one. And what is libel? And how much advertising a newspaper needs to break even? I'm going to get you all to understand that there's more to putting out a successful newspaper than the glory of the byline. Thanks. Oh, may I have some extra sauce for my husband? Your source. Mr. Bledsoe, what are you... Head of the House of Montague. Romeo and Juliet. Oh. The community theater is presenting Romeo and Juliet. We have been all week. There was a time when the Point Reyes light would cover local events. Now I guess Synanon is more important. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. We will cover it. Oh. We close tonight. One on the aisle. See you in Verona. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, parting with such sweet sorrow. Diederich is an amazing individual, Dave. He's extremely charismatic and very intelligent with all the zeal of the reformed alcoholic, which he is. He blends a smattering of logic, psychology, Eastern mysticism, into a rhetoric and a philosophy that sounds seductively humanistic. Beating people up is hardly my idea of humanism. Mm. Nor mine, but you have to admit, he said. Oh, darn. What you got? Weston had a special on the oysters, oh. and I thought... Hi. Well, I see we have a guest. Oh, uh, I'll make something extra. No, don't bother yourself, Dave. This should be the two of you. Well, aren't you going to have anything to I eat? I have to change for the theater. Please don't leave on my account. I'll uh, call you tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Good night. Good night.
you okay? Just look so down the mouth. Well, I'm all right. I'm just a little tired. Where are you from? Tennessee. I thought I heard something. Georgia, myself. Oh. How's everything in the newspaper business? Fine. Full of surprises. How's everything in the people business? Full of surprises. Well, have a nice day. Thank you. Are you sure this is accurate? I can't believe that everything about Synanon is as black as you paint it. The stuff that's rich as opinions, identified as opinion. Opinion goes on the editorial page. I know that. And where is the corroboration? Try and get somebody to talk. Richard and I called dozens of ex-members. You want a beer? I oh, know, Dave. I've seen the phone bill. That kind of extraneous expense could kick over this apple cart. Extraneous expense? Calling all over the country doing deep background when we should be covering the local news? This is local news. It's the tip of an iceberg. It's right in our own backyard. I'm going to follow it wherever it takes me. That's what I do. I'm a reporter. What am I, Dave? My wife. My partner. My editor. Well, you know, I don't feel very much like your editor or your partner. I feel like a cub reporter that you send to cover the Kiwanis luncheon while you and your cronies hang out at the courthouse. That's not fair. I consult you on everything. Do you? I hadn't noticed. Look, Kathy, this is an important story. I'm going to pursue it. Richard says that... Richard does not make editorial policy on this paper. Oh, come on. This is a community weekly. I will not have it said that the Point Reyes light is obsessed with cinema. We are not obsessed. You and I are not obsessed. Let me make something clear. I'm going to pursue this story because I want to. Not because Richard Offshee wants me to. You understand? Well, my paper's publishing it, but I felt that you should hear about it anyway. Charles Kingston left Synanon in 1977, not amicably. He's fighting for custody of his child, and his wife is still inside. Is he going to make it? Well, that's going to be touch and go. Do the police have any leads? Well, they say they've got an eyewitness, but... Uh... Oh, I sure hope you two are safe out there in the boonies. His name is Peter Lofgren. He was in Synanon at the same time Charles Kingston was. Floor supervisor to pediatrics east. Floor supervisor to pediatrics east. Peter Lofgren, I'm Tom Banner. This is Dave Mitchell, Kathy Mitchell of Point Ray's Light. I've got nothing to say. Uh, is Charles Kingston a friend of yours? 
These things are going to keep on happening until you tell us what you know. Dr. Patty McGeorge to OR Recovery. Dr. Patty McGeorge to OR Recovery. Katie, there's some folks to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi. How Hi. Are you? Good. How are you? Fine. Lousy. I had a budget for a new special, in-depth study of cults and their leadership. I don't have a budget anymore. Pressure from cinema? No comment. But as of now, you two are practically the only working press devoting extensive energy to the subject. Katie, Paul Morantz, line two. Hello, Paul. Katie, how are things? Okay, I'm going to put you on the speakerphone. Paul, I have Dave and Kathy Mitchell here with me. I told you about the Point Reyes life. Sure, I remember. Hello there. Hello. Hello, Paul. Paul is an attorney in L.A. suing Sinan on a false imprisonment incident. It's not a pretty story. How's it going? Well, we have a pretty strong case, but uh, Sinanon is well represented. All those lawyers? <laughs> All those lawyers. Say, you folks are right out there, aren't you? I mean, in the same town. That's right. Well, I hope you're okay. I mean, safe. Thanks, we're fine. Close your eyes. Now make a wish. Oh. Close your eyes. Now make, a, now make a wish. Now keep your eyes closed. Okay. I'll try to blow out the candle. Okay, <laughs> Pete. Go ahead. Hey! Ah. All right! All right. So, Bonnie, how did you two meet? Oh, we met sailing. Oh, you're a sailor. <laughs> No, I'm in advertising. Oh. Uh, do you know anything about cults? Well, no, not really. You will. <laughs> you got a place to stay? Where are they going to put me up until I find my own place? Here you go. <clears throat> yeah. It's all pretty well done. I Thank you. Kath, I feel terrible about leaving. No, you have to take that job. It sounds great. Yeah, I suppose, but with all this synonym stuff going on, I... Uh, uh. Ah, that word is taboo. This is a party. So you, uh, saw your canoe, Keith? Yeah, I did. It went real fast. How about your duck gun? Well, there won't be a lot of mallards floating around downtown Seattle. Oh, no, I guess not. Yeah, I'm gonna sell that, too. Unless Kathy and Dave want it. No, thank you. <laughs> you are the third person today who tried to stick a gun in my hands. Hey, I just thought you... I'm sorry, Keith. It's just I grew up in the South, and all over there was the obligatory shotgun in the rear window. I hated it then, and I hate it now. It's one of the things I love about this place. You don't see guns everywhere. Well, I drive around this country too, Kathy, more than you. And the guns are starting to appear ever since this Synanon thing. Sorry about the way the party worked out. It wasn't your fault. I think I'm becoming profoundly unhappy, Dave. What can I do? Oh, I don't know. Nothing, I guess. Thanks for offering, anyway. You want to talk about it? Wouldn't do any good. That's what I always say. Then we end up talking half the night. Is it school? You really don't see it, do you? See what? I know Synanon bothers you. Bothers me? Of course it bothers me. We didn't come to Point Reyes to devote our lives to a crusade to bring down some cult we hardly ever heard of. Kathy, this is no crusade. You 
You and Richard seem obsessed with this thing. You, you're charging around like some, some macho dynamic duo. Of course I'm charged up. For the first time in my career, I've got a story that I can sink my teeth into. Something that's really important to make the entire community stop in its tracks and listen. But that's just the point, Dave. Nobody is listening. Can't we back off? Just a little bit. Until one of the other thousand or so newspapers in this country join us out here on this limb. I'm scared, Dave. And people keep reminding me just how scared I am. If, if one more person says, are you safe? I swear I'm going to scream. Kathy, no one's going to hurt either of us. How do you know? How do you know that? Don't you know there's really very little we can do to protect ourselves? I think about that a lot. And I figure if they come after anybody, it'll be you. I've got over in my mind what I'd do if that happened. I'd run a photograph of your bloody body on page one, and right next to it, I'd publish a list of the sin and nonviolence that we have given the Organized Crime Bureau. I'd get my students to help me put out that issue. When it was out, I'd go home and cry. It'd be a hell of a story. And you wouldn't be afraid to publish it. What about us? I still feel like an outsider in this town. A carpetbagger. And we never have a minute to ourselves anymore with Richard Offshe here day and night. I know I haven't been spending any time with you lately. And you've been running yourself ragged from school to the paper. I appreciate it. I know it's a strain. But it'll ease up soon. How will it get easier? With Keith gone, we'll have to work even harder. We can't afford anybody to replace him. Well, we'll make it work. We still have money in the bank. No, we don't. I made a mistake in the checkbook. Thousand-dollar mistake. The paper's broke. Good night, Dave. Is anyone listening? Is anybody out there? We're beginning to wonder. We're beginning to feel a little like Alvin Gambanini. He's a rancher on the Petaluma Road, a neighbor to Senanon. He's tried to coexist with his neighbor, and for his trouble, he's been beaten and harassed. Is anybody listening to the story Mr. Gambanini has to tell? Is anybody listening to the story of Henry Harper? He was dragged from his car and beaten last March on the Synanon Ranch. The assailants received reduced charges. So far, there's only silence from the courts, from the Attorney General's office. And what about ex Synanon members, those who once were in leadership positions? Why don't they speak out? Why don't they tell their stories? We know it's none of our business. Reporting is simply getting the facts to the public. We've done that to the best of our ability. We know we shouldn't expect any more. Still, it's curious. Just answer one question and then we'll shut up. Is anyone out there listening? Yes, we are thinking of selling the paper. I can give you the figure. Tuesday. I know where it is. I'll find you. Fine. Goodbye.
Mr. Mitchell, I don't know if you remember me. My name is Peter Lofgren. If we can't use your name, Mr. Lofgren, then we can't print the story. It has to be this way. There's somebody still inside I have to protect. Who? From what, then? The Imperial Marines, he calls them. Martial arts experts. Armed men. Are you absolutely sure? I'm dead sure. Dietrich organized them last year. Said he wanted to hear some bones cracking. Bones cracking? Is that a quote? Mm, pretty much. But don't make the mistake of seeing Harper and Kingston as isolated incidents. It's organized, and it has a long history. The surfers in Santa Monica, the kids and ranchers up here, members who leave, internal discipline. Dieterich gets the word out not to mess with Synanon. Where are these Marines now? All over. And where are the guns? Wherever Dieterich wants them to be. You've got to publish this. Damn right. But not without a name. But it's dynamite. Not is an unattributed rumor. It's not. Look, I'm as shocked as you are, but I'm not going to let our zeal make us act irresponsibly. You were the one who said dot the I's and cross the T's. But we've got to tell someone. This is a ticking bomb. Doesn't Art have a friend in the Attorney General's office? I don't believe it. Reporters are going to jail to protect their sources. You just want to breeze in there and tell them that Peter Lofgren gave us this interview? We'll protect Lofgren. This is Mr. Newspaper Ethics who yelled at me about talking to the Gambaninis? Yes. Yes. But I'm a citizen here too, damn it. I was out walking. I saw a rabid dog. I'm not going to wait for someone else to confirm it. I'm going to call the man with a gun. You're not going to get an argument from me. I just hope he believes us. To us, it's proof even if we can't print it. No, I, I understand. I believe you. What can be done? Well, I'll take this information, and uh, if it checks out, I'll recommend an investigation. Will they act on your recommendation? Sure. Probably. But uh, announcing the start of an investigation and really pursuing it to convictions, uh, those are two different things. Are you saying that nothing will be done? Let me be frank. So long as Synanon is doing all this to its own people on its own property, no one is much going to care. If you had a state senator or the governor behind you, well, that'd be different. I'll call you when I'm president. That would help. Lunch, Dave. Oh, uh, give me a call. You made your decision. The chain can always use another paper. Okay. I appreciate the offer very much, Mr. Thompson. Uh, yeah, truthfully, a weekly in this neck of the woods would suit me to a T. Thanks uh, again. I'll talk it over with my wife. Right. Hey.
As attorney Paul Moran's returned home from his office this afternoon, he was bitten by a rattlesnake placed in his mailbox. The young attorney had recently been awarded a large default judgment against Senana, a controversial drug rehabilitation center in Northern California. According to a neighbor, Morantz's first words after the attack were, it's Senana. night, don't you think that's a good idea? No, I don't. Kathy, I mentioned to you how I important... I know what you say. I also know what I feel. You can't sell the paper now. And that rattlesnake was a stop sign. If we give up now, it's just yielding to intimidation. This whole thing is just beginning to come to a head. Oh, you are amazing. You don't care about me or Dave or the paper. All you care about is bringing down the giant. Well, where will you be when the bills start coming in? Sure, I'm scared. But selling the paper has nothing to do with sin and non-riches. It's simple economics. We're not making a living at it. And that's why we came here. We believe in this story. We want more than anything to follow this thing through. So do I. But we have to face the facts. Now, we can keep the paper, continue to lose money, and trust in Providence, or we can sell. Now, which do you think is the smart move? to know each other? Hello, Mrs. Mitchell. I can't say exactly when things started going wrong inside, I guess around 1977. Chuck Diedrich started making some very strange statements. We were going to move against our enemies. He said he wanted to hear some bones cracking. Then he began to insist on childlessness. We weren't going to have any more. It's as simple as that. First, he broke up marriages. Hundreds of people changed partners. Didn't matter how long you've been married, go off and sleep with somebody new. Chuck decided it, and it was done. A lot of people split because of that. Childbirth was overrated as an experience. Suddenly, women were getting abortions.
The men had it just as bad, worse maybe. Guys were brought in, gamed about vasectomy. Long games that went on 24 hours. <laughs> if you wanted a synonym to be a democracy where you got freedom and you were in the wrong place, you're living in a place where you got to do what you're told. And a lot of guys left over that issue. But those that stayed, they got beaten down, humiliated. And once they agreed, out they went. Out they went and had it done. Right then. Doctors were waiting. Four doctors working ten hours, seven days a week. And when it was over, Every male over 18 who'd been inside over five years had either left or had the vasectomy. <laughs> Everybody except Chuck Dietrich. But why stay in a place like that? They saved my life. It's as simple as that. The downers were starting to take over. I needed a strong figure, and there was Chuck Dietrich. I loved the man for what he did for me, and I still have. Great feeling for him. You did leave eventually. Yes. The lawyer was was suing us, Morantz. Chuck got on the wire. We're going after these blood sucking lawyers. He said, Oh boy, I am eager to get into the fray. I really do want an ear in a glass of alcohol on my desk. Really. And I know some guys who want to get one, too. And then he said he was quite willing to break some lawyer's legs. And then the next time, his wife's legs. And then maybe cut his kid's arm off. It's a very satisfactory, humane way of transmitting information. That's a quote I'm never going to forget. And then we heard about the rattlesnake. And I left the next day. You heard Charles Diederich ask his people to attack Paul Morantz? Many times. Can we quote you on that? Jesus would start coming forward. Maybe Jane's story would open the floodgates. I wouldn't be too sure. Dederick is still a very intimidating guy. Light. That's great, Tom. Sure, read me the lead.
Sure, we're going to tell us. It's right here. Thanks a lot. That's Tom Banner. Guess what? We got on the UPI. Full attribution on the Jane Dutton story. That's great. That's great. Ah, uh, congratulations. Congratulations to you. This one's mine. Four rays light. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's just that things have been so hectic around here. Yes, he's right here. Uh, can you hang on just a minute? It's Tompkins. We never got back to him on his offer to buy the paper. I forgot. Mr. Tompkins, I'm sorry, but we've decided not to sell. Oh, no, your offer was very generous. It's just that we're involved in something here that's very important to us. Uh, well, I'm sorry we wasted your time. Now, what about that follow-up on the interview with Miranda's doctor? He was kind of reluctant to talk, but maybe if I call him back, I could get some better quotes. I have a warrant here to search the premises for evidence. This is your copy. Step aside, sir. Open the gate. Following the attempt on Paul Morantz's life, and the resultant law enforcement activity, the country's news media began to focus on Synanon like never before. The background on Dieter confirmed. Oh, absolutely. Okay, what about the Gambinini? The Gambinini uh, are a couple of them. Charge out of this. Chronicle, the Post, the Times, all calling the point Ray's life for leads. So which one are you, Woodward or Bernstein? He thinks he's both. <laughs> Richard! 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 Come on in, the water's fantastic. You haven't heard. What's wrong? Heard what? Congressman Ryan, members of his delegation, and several members of the Jonestown sect were apparently ambushed and killed at a remote jungle airstrip at Port Kayatuma. Victims of the mass suicide and murder, all Americans, were found on the grounds of the religious commune at Jonestown. The Guiana Ministry of Information said that soldiers reported counting the bodies of 163 women, 183 men, and 82 children. Officials said that the victims, most from California, seemed to have died from poisoning, though some had been shot with rifles and automatic weapons. The following is a partial list of names of the victims released by the Guiana Ministry of Information. Mrs. Mitchell? Hello. I think my cancellation was a mistake. I'd like to reinstate my subscription, please. Of course. That's uh, Mrs. Lindley, Martha Lindley. Lindley, right. Isn't this, this 
Guiana thing. It's, it's terrible, isn't it? Yes, it is. I just want you to know I'm... I'm glad you and your husband came to Point Reyes. Thank you. Thank you. My God. Ever since Jonestown, the papers can't print enough about cinema. The world's waking up. Mm. Listen to this. It's from one of the tape seasons of Badger Raid. Diedrich says, We're not gonna mess with the old-time, turn-the-other-cheek religious postures. Our religious posture is, Don't mess with us, you can get killed dead. Literally dead. Dave? Uh, Hi, Art. I just heard they arrested Diederich in Arizona. Diederich? Arrested? Conspiracy to commit murder. And get this. Mr. Reformed Alcoholic, Charles Diederich, was drunk when they came for him. Drunk? Well, I guess that's the end of it. I wonder. Coastal Commission piece this week or not? Well, let's wait before the next meeting. It'll be more effective. It'll also, give us more room to detail that auto repair ripoff story. Okay. Well, this article ought to make my file a little fatter. But I still miss the days when the papers were full of synonym. Hello. Tom, what are you doing here? What are you guys going to break down and buy a teletype? We don't cover national news, you know that. Oh, today you are national news. You won the Pulitzer Prize. <laughs> Today, for only the fourth time in its history, the Pulitzer Prize for meritorious public service was awarded to a small weekly paper, the Point Reyes Light, published by David and Kathy Mitchell from the small population 350 Northern California community of Point Reyes Station, located in the western section of <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Somebody get the glasses. Come on, come on. <laughs> there we go. Sometime after the Mitchells and I received the Pulitzer Award, Dave and Kathy separated. Ultimately, they sold the Point Reyes light. Dave became a reporter for a San Francisco daily. Kathy accepted a professorship at the University of North Carolina, and I remained at Berkeley. Charles Diederich pleaded no contest and was placed on probation. Synanon headquarters moved around the country for a time, finally settling once again in Northern California, where the organization continued to flourish. <laughs>